What's happening, everybody? On today's show, an early look at the SEC win totals for 2024. What are the best bets right before we head into spring ball for the 2024 season? Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what is up, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. New customers join today. Get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to every day. So we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. All right, we got our... Uh, very early SEC win totals for the 2024 season from our friends over at FanDuel. We're going to get to that in just a little bit, but we got plenty of action going on uh, around the conference. Tons of uh, assistant coaching news and much, much more. So let's dive into it. Let's do it. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the Around the conference. And we start over at Alabama as Kalen DeBoer continues to solidify his coaching staff. Uh, we'll start first with Kane Womack, his defensive coordinator, officially announced on Monday. We've known about this for some time, but uh, officially official from Alabama on Monday. The former head coach at South Alabama, Kane Womack, joins the Crimson Tide as their defensive coordinator he said in a press release growing up in the sec you know what it means to play football in tuscaloosa and watching alabama football from the outside it was always impressive and intimidating and you always want to be part of something truly special the standard alabama has established is impressive and we're excited to be the next group that gets to build upon that legacy so kane womack been the head coach of south alabama taking a step back and going to be the uh dc at alabama so uh from South Alabama and Mobile on up to Tuscaloosa. Now, also yesterday from ESPN's Adam Rittenberg, Alabama set to hire Christian Robinson as their outside linebackers coach. He will replace William Inge, who was originally supposed to take that job. More on him in just a bit. But Christian Robinson, been Baylor's linebackers coach, but has tons of SEC experience. Uh, in fact, deep SEC ties. He coached and played in the conference, spent 2022 with Auburn as their linebackers coach, was Florida's linebackers coach, uh, was also a grad assistant at Mississippi State, Ole Miss, and Georgia, played for the Bulldogs in 51 games, 17 starts. He has worked at six of the 14 current SEC schools. So Christian Robinson, a lot of SEC experience, uh, was just at Baylor, but prior to that, tons of SEC experience. So uh, he will come in and coach the outside linebackers. Alabama also set to hire uh, Brian Ellis to serve as their new tight ends coach. Ellis is a former quarterback at UAB, currently serves as the OC at Georgia Southern, and uh, he will leave that job to come to Alabama. Now, in addition to that, uh, Pete Thamel reporting yesterday, Crimson Tide expected to hire veteran offensive line coach Chris Kapilovic. Uh, originally, DeBoer brought Scott Huff with him over from Washington, but Huff has left Tuscaloosa to go join, join Ryan Grubb up in Seattle with the Seahawks. So Chris Kapilovic uh, accepted a job to coach the O-line at Baylor, but was most recently on Michigan State staff under Mel Tucker. And, man, this weird trend of, like, guys that take a job in the offseason and then before they even really get settled in, take another job in the offseason. It's crazy how that's worked out. But uh, that is uh, going to fill out the staff for Alabama. So if you keep a track here. Here's what it looks like. You got head coach Kalen DeBoer. He came from Washington. You got your OC and quarterbacks coach Nick Sheridan. He came from Washington. You got your DC and inside linebackers coach Caden Womack. He comes from South Alabama. Uh, two of the guys staying on the staff. Running back coach Robert Gillespie, he gets the title of assistant head coach. And Freddie Roach, the D-line coach, he gets the title of associate head coach. So both of these guys were already there. Uh, they bring a wide receivers coach, Jamarcus Shepard, from Washington. Uh, sounds like he will get a co-OC title as well. Brian Ellis comes over from Georgia Southern. He'll be the tight ends coach. 
And then, as we mentioned, Christian Robinson from Baylor will be the old outside linebackers coach. And then your two DBs coaches, who will also have the title of co-DC, Colin Hitchler from Wisconsin and Maurice Lindquist from uh, Buffalo. So keep a track there. It's a lot of new guys on that staff there in Alabama, but um, you knew as much when they hired Kalen DeBoer. He was going to be bringing in a lot of different guys from all over the place. So there's your coaching staff for Alabama for 2024. We'll see how that works out for them on the field. All right, other SEC coaching news over at Tennessee. We talked a little bit about former Washington assistant William Inge a couple weeks ago. Uh, according to On3 Sports, he will be the new uh, linebackers coach at Tennessee, replacing Brian Jean Marie. Uh, he was joining uh, originally Husky head coach Kalen DeBoer at Alabama. He was a co defense coordinator linebackers coach at Washington the past two seasons. And uh, Inch just turned 50 in December, over two de decades of coaching experience. Got to start at Iowa, but um, he will, instead of going to Alabama, be going to Tennessee. So they get there in Knoxville for Josh Heupel and company. Um, again, an interesting move there. Uh, Tennessee also has reportedly found their new running backs coach, Darrell Sims, is uh, on the move to Rocky Top after spending last year at Cincinnati. Been a full-time college assistant since 2010. Worked his way up the coaching ladder. Was uh, with Louisville and Cincinnati in recent years. So, big get there for Tennessee. Darrell Sims going to coach their running backs. Over at Mizzou, some unfortunate news for them as uh, Sam Horn, two-sport athlete at Mizzou, is going to miss some time recovering from surgery. Uh, Power Mizzou reporting that. Sam Horn underwent Tommy John surgery to repair an injured UCL. Uh, Horn is a pitcher for the Mizzou baseball team, but was also a quarterback backing up Brady Cook for the Tigers. And he is going to miss the entire football and baseball season this year with a 12 to 15 month recovery time, as we know, for Tommy John. So it is the second time the injury bug has hit Thor, uh, Sam Horn. He was limited to just four innings. Um, in last year's baseball season and is considerable MLB draft buzz for 2025 could be a major league baseball player, but uh, he's seen limited time the past two seasons as a quarterback at Mizzou took a red shirt in 2022, made three appearances last year. So we'll see where he ends up. But some people thought, you know, maybe he could give Brady cook a run for his money. Uh, he will not play this coming football season as he recovers from that Tommy John surgery. Now, one other tidbit over at Mizzou, uh, Arizona is reportedly going to come in and poach their athletic director. Uh, Mizzou AD Desiree Reed Francois is set to become the new AD at Arizona. At from Pete Thamel. He said, uh, Reed, Reed Francois is reportedly receiving a five-year deal from Arizona. She spent nearly three years at Missouri, does have connections to Arizona, Graduated from their law school back in 1997. So, uh, Mizzou going to be in the department looking for a new athletic director. So, there you have it. This is the latest news going on around the conference. Uh, thank you guys for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we're going to start to hit on some early win totals. Over or under win totals for SEC schools across uh, the football landscape. We will touch on that coming up in just a second. First, I want to remind you, this episode presented to you by friends over at FanDuel. You can get your buckets on with your first new bet over at FanDuel. They are America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. And you can get in all the NBA action. We're just coming out of the All-Star break, and we got plenty of games happening every single night uh, going into this weekend. Of course, the backstretch of the season. A lot of teams fight for playoff spots. And you can get in on the action. Quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props. All of it is up there for you at FanDuel.com slash locked on. When you go on there to sign up, make sure you put in the FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is going to get you the special offer we're telling you guys about. And then once you've signed up, you can download the FanDuel app and go check it every day on all the different action they've got up there for you. Go shoot your shot. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on is the website. And uh, you will get in on there with FanDuel. They are the official sportsbook partner of the NBA.
rolling along here, Locked On SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. Keep coming back and checking us out. Again, getting you caught up with a lot of the SEC football news that continues to go on here. Man, we got two more two more schools now to worry about in Texas and Oklahoma, so a lot of stuff going on. But I saw this came out a couple days ago. Figured we would uh, dedicate an episode to it. FanDuel. Uh, our friends over FanDuel recently releasing the projected win totals for each SEC football team for the upcoming season. So why not get into it and give you what we're feeling? Again, this is pre-spring. A lot can happen still in the transfer portal. We could have quarterbacks still coming or going. We could have big names you know, hitting the transfer portal, moving. Alabama could look completely different. So a lot of things to take place here. But uh, let's dive into it. We'll start with the teams with the highest win totals. And we'll start with the Georgia Bulldogs as – FanDuel's got them over under at 10 and a half wins next year. And just about everybody I talked to has said, take the over on the Bulldogs. They have gone undefeated in the regular season the last couple of years. They return their starting quarterback, Carson Beck. They bring in a Florida transfer running back, Trevor Etienne. So, look, Georgia's going to be really good. They, they don't rebuild. They just reload there at Georgia. They do get Clemson in week one on a neutral field. That'll be a tough one. And then tough road trips at Kentucky, at Alabama, at Texas, and at Ole Miss. Keep in mind, Georgia, Kentucky's kind of played them tough there, up there in uh, Kentucky a couple times in recent years. But Alabama, you know that's not going to be easy. At Texas and at Ole Miss, those are all tough road games. And then they get home games against Auburn and Tennessee and that neutral game, neutral field game against Florida. But I just feel like because of all the talent they they return, I'm going to lean – Georgia to go 11 and one and lose one of those tough road games. But I think they take care of business elsewhere. Uh, we'll go over on Georgia with the 10 and a half wins. The other team in the SEC next year slated at 10 and a half wins. It is Texas. Longhorns went 11 and one in the regular season last year. And Steve Sarkeesian get that big fat raise, making the transition from the big 12 into the SEC. They will face four teams with losing records last year, but it's that week-to-week grind of the SEC that really can take a, a hold of you. I talked about this yesterday. Uh, week two, they are at the reigning national champs in Michigan. I know Michigan loses a ton, but still a tough place to play. They get the neutral field game against Oklahoma, always tough. They lost that one last year. And home games against Georgia, Florida, Kentucky, and that finale road trip at AM, I think is going to be brutal. That, I mean, look, AM, no matter what they're – record is by that game they're going to treat it like their Super Bowl so I'm leaning under I, I think Texas I don't think they'll get to 11 or more wins I think 10 and a half I'm going to go under because look even if they get through the grind of that schedule I think 10 and 2 at best with Quinn Ewers you know he's going to miss some time he just he's missed time each of the last two years he's going to get banged up at some point um not rooting for that just saying we'll probably see Arch Manning for a game or so um but I'm just going to play it safe. I'll, I'll go the under on Texas. So we're going over on Georgia. We're going under on Texas. How do you feel about Alabama? Nine and a half wins. First off, this has got to be the lowest win total for Alabama in some time. But Crimson Tide fans, uh, it's been a tumultuous offseason. You've had Nick Saban retire and, you know, coordinator hired, and then he leaves and just a bunch of different changes. But can Alabama get the 10 wins? It seems like a very – Tough ask in year one for Kalen DeBoer, but as we've seen, Kalen DeBoer has had success in year one of programs. Um, nine and three would hit the under. Look at Bama's schedule. They have a road trip week three at Wisconsin, and then they have road trips at Tennessee, at LSU, and at Oklahoma. Uh, look, it feels like even if you're being unbiased, they're going to trip up and lose one of those, right? At Tennessee, at LSU, and at Oklahoma. Keep in mind, even Nick Saban, last time he went to Tennessee and LSU, lost lost both those places. So uh, they get home games against Georgia. It's going to be brutal. South Carolina, Missouri, Auburn. Uh, so right now, until we see what Alabama adds in the transfer portal, I'm going to lead under the 9.5 and, and predict that Kalen DeBoer goes 9-3 and three in year one. But if they add more talent at some positions of need in the portal post-spring, I think 10-2 and two or better is doable. It's doable, but... I mean, Jalen Miller is going to have to take that next step, develop as a quarterback. Does he fit the DeBoer system, the offense? Again, these are all just normal questions everybody's asking about Alabama, but 
Uh, feels weird to look at the Crimson Tide and say I'm going to go under a nine and a half win total, but not by much. I do think I think nine and three that hits the under, and um, it's just a tough schedule, tough tough road trips for Alabama this season. Next up, we got LSU, and the over under of them is nine and a half. And Brian Kelly doing a pretty good job there. At Baton Rouge just had a Heisman Trophy winner, albeit having a terrible, god awful defense. But the year prior, he won the SEC West and got to Atlanta in year one. Um, the problem with this win total of nine and a half, he's going to have a lot of new pieces. Garrett Nussmeyer is new quarterback. Uh, they did get rid of Matt House, and Blake Baker is going to come in and fix that defense. But for LSU to go nine, to, to hit the over on nine and a half, they got to go 10 and two. And I just think they have pitfalls galore on this schedule. Week one in Vegas, they play USC. Brian Kelly has lost each of his neutral field season openers the last two years at LSU, uh, losing to Florida State, both in New Orleans and then Orlando. Um, they get home games against UCLA. I know they just, you know, hired Deshaun Foster, lost uh, Chip Kelly, but UCLA is a team with talent. Uh, they get home games against Ole Miss, Alabama, Oklahoma. Those are all tough potential pitfalls, even though they're at home in Baton Rouge. And then they got road trips at South Carolina, at AM, and at Florida. There was a potential loss there for LSU. So I'm going to lean much like Alabama. I would say I think LSU probably at best is nine and three just with that schedule. So that would be an under nine and a half there. So playing it a little bit safe here, going under on. Nine and a half for both Bama and LSU. Another uh, couple teams they have at nine and a half. How about Missouri? Uh, they just had a fantastic season, but did they overachieve a bit last year? Nine and a half. That me means Missouri's got to have back to back 10 win seasons. And they lose pieces in the secondary. Obviously, they lose Cody Schrader at running back, they lose their defensive coordinator, Blake Baker, some other pieces on that defense, like Darius Robinson. Uh, Mizzou's schedule is very easy out of the gates. They should start 4-0, but then they have a road trip at a &M. They have road trips to Alabama, South Carolina, and then they get some tough home games against Oklahoma, Auburn. They do avoid Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, and Georgia. So 10-2 is doable, but I don't know. I just lean more to they had a fantastic 2023, but it feels like Maybe they come back down to earth a little bit, take a little bit of a step back. I would lean more towards eight and four, nine and three for Mizzou. Again, I I, I do think the schedule's doable for them. It's better than some other teams, but um, I don't know. Just feels like a little bit of a step back. Maybe the defense isn't as good. You know, maybe they struggle to find that dominant running back like Cody Schrader was a year ago, leading the SEC in rushing. So we'll go under the nine and a half on Mizzou. So that's all three teams so far that are nine and a half. We've gone under. How about the next one, Ole Miss? Nine and a half. Uh, I think we're going to go over here on Ole Miss. They've just done a great job of adding through the transfer portal. Guys like Walter Nolan, uh, Pooh Paul, Prince William Mon, Mon Mielin uh, on offense. You, you know, you got Ulysses Bentley back there in the backfield. Logan Diggs coming over from LSU. Did lose Quinshaw Judkins. That'll hurt. Uh, but then they add, uh, you know, they bring back Jackson Dart. A lot of those offensive weapons like Trey Harris. They add Juice Wells. Caden Priestcorn's back. I just, I look at Ole Miss. They're loaded with talent. Their non conference schedule's a joke. Toughest one there is a road trip to Wake Forest. Uh, they avoid Alabama. They avoid Texas. They avoid AM. I see only two potential pitfalls for Ole Miss on the schedule. That's at LSU and then home for Georgia. And even if they lose both of those, they're 10 and 2. So I'll go over the nine and a half for Ole Miss. Just a couple more here on this segment. Again, we're going to decreasing win totals. Tennessee, they've got it eight and a half. Tennessee was very balanced last year. They weren't all throwing the football like they were two years ago with Hendon Hooker. They ran the football very well. Uh, Brew McCoy is back for another year. Squirrel White. Um, they did add Chris uh, Brazel from Tulane. And they brought in some big-time freshman recruits. Boo Carter, Mike Matthews. They lose Jalen Wright at running back, but Dylan Sampson. Obviously really good. And uh, Cam Seldon, a couple other pieces back there. The question with Tennessee is, can they get to nine wins? And let's break it down like this. If they beat NC State in week two, they should be 4-0 in non-con. So then the question is, can we find S five SEC wins? They play at Vandy, that's a win. They play at Arkansas, that should be a win. 
And then they're home against Kentucky, Mississippi State, and Florida. All winnable. If they win all the five of those, that gets them to nine wins. And that will allow them losses at Oklahoma, home against Alabama, and at Georgia. So I, I'm going to be optimistic about Tennessee. I'm going to say over the eight and a half. And then we got uh, Texas A&M. Over under for them is eight and a half. Mike Elko, he comes over from Duke. Obviously, he was D.C. at A&M before. Very familiar with College Station. But feels like Rome wasn't built in a day. Feels like the Aggies are going to go through a little bit of transition. They open with Notre Dame in week one, but it is in College Station. Uh, their toughest road games are at Florida, at Auburn. They get home games against Texas, LSU, and Missouri. Uh, to me, this all depends on Connor Wagman. What does he look like? If he's playing well in the Colin Klein offense, I think the Aggies could get to nine wins. But I'll default here and say some growing pains in year one under Mike Elko. Maybe a 7-5, and 8-4 and four type year. And, and that would be very good. If Elko goes 8-4 and four in year one, that's fantastic. But that would be an under the 8.5 win total. So what I'm saying here is these are some really good win totals because I, I got it, you know, right on the line. It could be, you know, one win more, one win less, and you're right there. So uh, still more to come here on Locked On SEC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. We'll hit on the other win totals as we're decreasing here. We're getting below 8.5 here. We'll touch on that here in just a sec. But first, this episode presented to you by our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for that role. That's why you have to check out our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. They have got the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive for you. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. They know that small businesses are wearing so many hats. That's why uh, they are uh, helping you constantly find ways to make the process easier. Two and a half million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring. Go post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college. Go post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, roll along here, locked on SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. All right, we've done half of the SEC win total, so we got to get into the other half. So we got to run through these very quickly. Let's get over to Auburn as they are seven and a half win totals on the year. Now, Hugh Freeze, in year two of his previous stops at Liberty and Ole Miss, he went 10 and one and eight and five. So history shows us year two of Hugh Freeze, he should take that step forward. But um, it's an important year for Hugh Freeze. Obviously, taking over play calling duties and all that, it is a tough schedule for the Tigers. And I'm still not sold on their quarterback unless Peyton Thorne improves dramatically. They have a three consecutive road trip portion of their schedule where they're at Georgia, at Mizzou, and at Kentucky. Uh, the Iron Bowl is on the road at the end of the year. They get home games against Oklahoma and Texas A&M. Those will both be brutal. But to me, eight and four should be the goal for Hugh Freeze. I'll lean the over for now, over seven and a half, because if, if they go eight and four, that gets them the over. But let's see if they improve that quarterback spot through the portal post-spring. I'm curious if they add another body to that group. Over Kentucky, they will be turning a new era over to Brock Vandergrift at quarterback with Bush Hamden calling the plays. They lose Liam Cohen. He heads to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But uh, Vandergrift has spent the last few years backing up in Athens as a backup with the Georgia Bulldogs. We'll see if he can bring some of that winning over to Kentucky. But in their first five games, Mark Stoops has to play South Carolina, Georgia, and a road trip to Ole Miss. They could be staring at two losses before they even flip the calendar over to October. And then you have road trips at Florida, at Tennessee, at Texas. Uh, the Louisville rivalry game is at home, but that one's always tough. I would lean the under and say Kentucky goes seven and five. Seven and five would get them under the seven and a half win total there. Over at Oklahoma, um, Sooners at seven and a half. And it seems like that's low considering – you know, where they've been in recent years, a team that with Lincoln Riley was constantly making the, the college football playoff and all that. But Brent Venables has had his work cut out for him. And look, 
if some things click for them, they could hit the over seven and a half. Um, you know, not as high expectations there in Norman right now as there are in Austin. Sark's got all the pressure. People are looking at Venables going, eh, we just transition year, new quarterback, all this kind of stuff. Um, look, it's just a betting perspective. If, if I'm looking at Oklahoma, I would say maybe an eight and four season could be doable. So I would lean over the seven and a half for Oklahoma. Over Florida, the Gators, uh, man, it was a rough year last year. They started five and two and then lost, what, five in a row, finished five and seven. So their win total for next year is five and a half. And we know that schedule is absolutely brutal. They do bring back Graham Mertz, but they got to uh, replace Trevor Atien. I think Montreal Johnson could be fine. They'll lose Ricky Parasol at wide receiver. And there's just a lot of people calling for Billy Napier's head. I think it's going to be a tough one. I would lean. Look, it's still Florida. I get the schedule's brutal. I would still lean the over. I would say six and six because that's the thing. Napier, I think, has to go to six and six to keep his job. Anything less, if he has two back-to-back years under 500, I think he's fired. So we'll go the over on the win total for Florida just because Billy Napier's back is up against the wall. He's got to go six and six at least to stay there at Florida. Uh, kind of same thing with Arkansas. Sam Pittman in the same boat. He goes out and hires Bob Petrino as his offense coordinator. The win total for Arkansas is five and a half. Hawks went nine and four. Just three years ago in 2021, best season under Sam Pittman, but they went seven and six the next year and digressed horribly last year, going four and eight. And that was with KJ Jefferson at quarterback. Uh, they're going to have a new quarterback. And again, helps to have Bobby Petrino as the offensive coordinator, but we'll go same boat here. Like, I, if I were betting right now, I might say Arkansas under five and a half, but again, man against back against the wall. If Sam Pittman's going to survive this year, he's got to go at least six and six at Arkansas. So, if you want to put your money where your mouth is, I think that's where you, you would lean the over just because he's got to. He has no other choice. Uh, another one, Shane Beamer over in South Carolina. Five and a half win total for him. Think about two years ago. He goes eight and five. They beat Clemson. They beat Tennessee. Everybody's feeling so good about him. Spencer Rattler. Um, Rattler's gone. And they just went five and seven last year with a horrible offensive line. I know they've worked at rebuilding the O-line and D-line and working in the trenches. They go and bring in Rocket Sanders from Arkansas at running back. They bring in Robbie Ashford, transfer quarterback from Auburn, to uh, battle out with Lenora Sellers. But, again, same thing here. Shane Beamer's got to go 6-6. Six, six and six. You have another five-win season and miss a bowl game. I think, uh, I think he's on the hot seat there. So, we will lean – the over with South Carolina. I think six wins. Six wins has to be the ceiling for them. Uh, over at Mississippi State, Jeff Levy taking over a tough gig there. Your one is never easy for a coach. And look, they're a far cry from where they were with Mike Leach. Zach Arnett did not do a very good job last year. They finished five and seven. I'm leaning over here, though. I think they can get to at least five and seven again. Keep in mind, the win total is four and a half. So if they get the five and seven, that's an over. They should beat Eastern Kentucky, Toledo, and UMass in the non-con. That's three wins. They have a road trip week two at Arizona State. That'll be tough. But if they can find a way to win that one, then they just need one SEC win to hit the over. And I think they could win a home game against Florida. They could win a home game against Arkansas if things go right. But the rest of their schedule is brutal. They're at Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, and Ole Miss. And they're home for A&M and Mizzou. As an absolutely brutal schedule. If I'm Jeff Levy, I'm looking at that going, wait, this is year one? Absolutely brutal. But I do think State can go five and seven and hit the over four and a half. And lastly, we've got Clark Lee and Vanderbilt on here. A two and a half win total. <laughs> two and a half wins. Um, Commodores need to get back to their winning ways there in Nashville. Uh, Clark Lee, what, they had the five and seven year just two years ago. And then they go two and ten last year. They've made some staffing changes, changed some things up on who's calling the plays on offense. And I think they should be able to go over two and a half. Look, if you can't win, if you can't win three games, Clark Lee, you're done so in Nashville. So we're gonna go over the two and a half win total for Vandy. Again, this is all very early. A lot could change. We haven't even seen these teams take the field for spring practice uh, or play their spring games. So a lot of questions still to be answered around the conference. So 
But that's why FanDuel puts these out to kind of spark some uh, conversation and maybe some people get in on the action and make some early bets. But if you feel really good, passionate about some of those win totals, then feel free to jump on them over at FanDuel.com. Look, thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to our everydayers. Come on back. Check us out tomorrow. I'm Chris Gordy. This has been Locked on SEC. For your second listen, go check out Locked on Sports Today, uh, streaming on 24-7 on YouTube. Uh, it is all the big top st- sports stories of the day with our local experts. Locked on Sports Today is where you find that on YouTube. Again, I'm Chris Gordy. This has been Locked on SEC. We will talk to you guys tomorrow.